That's where I hang out. And that's where I do the sexy. Uh, if you would like to recompile my where did face you think that's going with that? Do you think that's going to throw to Pedro? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whenever the hell else, we come up with, this week is no exception, we got a bunch of mind-melting, penguin-flavored nightmare fuel right for your eye holes. I'm Ben Stone, that man up north, um, when Jordan's fang, he's doing weird setups, and, uh, Britannia's own, Pedro Mateus. Hello. Hi. The weirdest setup. <laughs> it is kind of brilliant, man. Um, special guest, but more on that later. Together with you at home in chat room dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. What's up? What is up, lads? Uh, I got like a two minute thing I got to talk about. So who wants to go first? I'll go first. Yay. Yay. I'm trying <laughs> to get travel arrangements done for scale, coordinating between like. A dozen people who are arriving on different days and trying to sort out hotel shit is super fun, you guys. Oh my god, I'm having a blast. Kill me. Yay. Kill me. <laughs> I, 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 I gotta, Oh, what? I was, I was just gonna say I gotta figure out my rooming arrangements with empty. We're gonna f debate on who's big spoon and who's little spoon. Oh, are you guys gonna be in the same room? Yeah, we 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 gotta, we gotta share a hotel for a couple days or so. Oh, right until the house shows up. Yeah. Okay. Uh. <laughs> and over here, as you probably saw on Tuesday, um, yes, the Steam box is back together, and it's for all intents and purposes done. I just need to finish running the uh, performance numbers just to. You know, like that person on YouTube, um, just to prove their point, I guess. Um, to pointlessly was, or okay, it wasn't little, pointless. Little behind the scenes, <laughs> but we were talking about this in the previous super shows, and I, I, I looked at the video because I remember we posted it, and I saw that there were two comments, and I was like, no, there's nine comments or six. So it's like, ooh, somebody got into it. And I just assumed it was Pedro. <laughs> Shock. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, that person clearly had an agenda that they were trying to pass along, and I just ended the whole thing by agreeing with them. It's like, yes, that is precisely the point. So, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, those do. will be coming. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that was pretty cool, man. You did a live stream, and... Uh, yep, with our Arthur. It's <laughs> pretty cool, man. I'm down with that. Uh, I've been playing with a bunch of junk that... Mackie, that big honking control surface, um, okay. working with a uh, yeah, Mister Mackie, the Christmas doll um, control surface. It was in rough state. Uh, cosmetically, it's fine, but it, it's clearly something. If you've ever dealt with electronics, you know when the silicon's being flexed for the first time in a long time. You're like, oh, this has got gremlins in it. Plus, it's got the mechanical stuff with the motorized faders. I put some new capacitors on. All the, like, le level one, there's another level I got to go into. It's going to take a minute to get it sorted, but it's way too big for the desk. I mean, it fits, but I have no room for, like, this. And oh, we got to have room here. All this room's gone. But the main reason I got it, the main reason, the legitimate reason, because it was, like, 80 bucks, is like, oh, okay, that'll be fun to, like, play with and set up and repair. Then do a video. It works, by the way. Spoilers if you want to be the impatient lot. And uh, that's definitely the thing. But something I brought up on Wednesday, uh, Pedro, you were around Wednesday, right? Don't we do a show? Yes, okay. we do. Linux right. Weekly. He's, he's, he's mentally absent from us. I don't <laughs> listen. Sometimes I check out too, so I don't hold it. I'm mentally <laughs> absent through most of my life. Your point being? <laughs> that, something that I'm is going my point. to be doing is, this is going to be a thankless task, but I, I kind of had my uh, legitimate Gallifrey Falls no more minute with the um, Digimax 003 because I looked online and did my research and I'm like, hey man, this thing works apparently. And fair enough. It was, you know, I had to go dig through old mailing list and like somebody was like, yeah, I did it. And then I got tired. And some other guy took it up and he's like, hey, I got this accepted into the also the also patch into the girdle and it's official. So I got it, picked it up. The main function of an interface is to record. So no issue when it's recording there's a click every seven to 10 seconds. It's like, that would really screw somebody up. Me, I'm like, I just bought it to play with. But fortunately, 
work has resumed on that driver because I was like, yo, and he's like, yeah, that, that bug's been around for like two years. I'm like, you might want to put that somewhere because somebody, a good one of those uh, can go two, 300 bucks, man, that could screw your day up if that's all the money you had to pick up interface. And I, I want to prevent stuff like that from ever happening. And I'm just going to do it out of my own pocket for right now. But uh, I've already picked up, I'm going to eBay, sorting like 99 cents, getting anything that I can. Um, I'm really interested in Motu, uh, Mark of the Unicorn stuff, uh, Sapphire, interested in that. Uh, basically anything that has a plug, be it FireWire or USB that plugs into a computer that you can do recording on, I want to do, and I am doing, um, I'm already three in, a database, a modern database. So people looking to do music production under Linux and, you know, people like getting rid of like, ah, oh, Windows 7, ZOL, what do I do? I don't want to go to Windows 10. Or same way with like, they don't make Mac with FireWire ports and I got all this gear. I want to give them a good path. Um, people doing podcasts like what we're doing right now and just make that laid out, do a video for each one, lay it out. Like this is the latency. This is the weirdness for it. Maybe, or maybe it just doesn't work. I'm going to do a three chair system too. We're going to keep that tradition alive. It's going to be a green chair, yellow chair, red chair. I think that's easy enough for a windows user to understand. Red chair means good. <laughs> yeah. Sounds about right. Yeah. And for the YouTube videos, I'll only respond if they're, uh, references or questions about spaghetti. Okay. Carbonara. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I'm going to do that. Uh, one thing I do ask is if you have some old gear laying around that you're not using, that you don't want, that's going to get thrown away. Give it to me. And I do mean give. Um, Cause <laughs> I, I asked Wednesday and apparently somehow that was misconstrued. I had six, really seven people. I think, each and every one of you took the time to write in, but uh, they were all like, here's the list of stuff I have. Bye. Oh. <laughs> so if you go to our contact page, uh, we got a PO box. If you get anything that uh, would end up in a landfill, uh, send it this way. And if it's going to be usable, put a note in there, be like, Hey man, use this FO. And hopefully we can build this. It's, uh, it's just got to get done. And no one else seems to want to do it or interested in doing it. So kind of like how Linux gaming has got started. I'm like, I'm not the best person for this job, but fine. If I got to do it, I'll do it. And hopefully it'll be, well, not hopefully, it will definitely be of help in the future for, you know, I caught a $125 bullet with this uh, pre-sodas because it's got a serious issue that, it's not documented anywhere, but it will be now because I've, I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's not going to be a daily driver. So there, there's my spiel. Contact, there's a link. Um, don't send me anything with air holes in it, please. Again, <laughs> sound legit? Unless it's a so, horse. I mean, I was going to ask, like, can you, is, is the horse MIDI compatible? Can you plug some yeah, cables baby. into it and get some noise out? Good. It sounds like it's the Steam. So, uh, we start off this segment this week with an interesting little find uh, someone yeah, on Reddit uh, brought up. Uh, so, Nibarika on Reddit uh, has a friend who released a game on Steam. It's not selling too well because, you know, shock among shocks if you're an indie on Steam, you're not going to get a lot of purchases unless you're, you know, very, very popular. Mm -hmm. So, um, he, uh, his, he, bought, he bought his friend's game. Uh, they don't have a they don't have a Linux version. They uh, played it a bit on Proton, and uh, they asked their friend, "Hey, can you check your sales? Because I want to see if it shows up as a Linux version." Turns out it don't, and that caused a minor kerfuffle. Uh, Mr. Pierre Loop Guru uh, eventually came in to comment, and he said, "Oh, that that's not right. We're gonna try. And, we're gonna go fix that." So that that's that's the story. Apparently, for a while, that's good. Uh, un <laughs> unintentionally, it seems. Uh, Proton sales and Proton uh, game time was being tracked as Windows, which I mean, you know, that that's actually kind of shocking considering, you know, Valve can easily figure out what what people are playing uh, with Proton, given the amount of information they have at their disposal. It seems a bit weird that uh, this was some uh, an oversight that made its way through. I don't know. Uh, OK, when I saw this. Even with Plague Man's follow up, when I first read this on Reddit, did you really think Valve was tracking that as a Linux cell? I mean, like, 
Really? They could. They could. They could. Oh, 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 yeah. Uh, I completely believe that the technology exists to do that. Um, <laughs> just didn't think they were really doing it. That came across as like, sure we are. Just buy more stuff because we're a company and we make money if you buy stuff. Buy more stuff. <laughs> Well, By the way, yeah, we got I'm... another sale coming on at the end of the month. <laughs> <laughs> you missed the last two last week. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it would be great if Proton sales counted as Linux purchases. And apparently, according to uh, Pierre Le Préfet, uh that will be the case. So I'm very much looking forward to it because, yeah, if people are playing the game on Linux using Proton, but they are playing it on Linux, that that should technically count as a Linux purchase, and the game developers should be made aware of that. It's like, well, no, oh, look, no. They, we have a bunch of people buying it on Linux. Like, no, uh, not, not, even, not even that, that thing like, in the future. Pro Proton is Valve's own product. You'd think they'd want to yeah. know if people are using <laughs> it, right? Um, yeah. That's so the, the whole the, thing, though, Brad. They know. They just, they're just they're just not telling the developers. Right. There's like this yeah. doesn't make us any more or less money. We know if we need to know. I mean, the data's there. It's like the whole Steam survey thing. We're like, finally, I'm like, well, just that that's public facing stuff. Tell people. Yeah. People don't want. Yeah. They just want an answer. Like, sure it does. Sure, fuck go go go. <laughs> have fun. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, 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 I mean, after the whole Steam charts debacle, I think it's understandable that like. Valve is a little more careful about what information they release because it turns out, and yeah, that that, that dude just like went on and worked for Epic. So shit, perfectly like, clear. I believe Plague Man, hundred percent, like to the best of his knowledge, is like, yeah, I thought it was, man. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. what I was told. <laughs> so all right, all right. One Steam charts, though. Yes. So uh, Steam uh, DB dot info has uh, a new page uh, which came along after Valve changed how people could buy the um, soundtracks for games. Because previously, if you wanted to buy a soundtrack, you'd have to have the game in order to be able to even download it. And Steam was going, yeah, there's a lot of people not buying the soundtracks because they don't want to play the game. They just like the music. Makes sense. So since we like money, let's uh, uh, wait, let but, people... Hentai bad girls, really? Oh yeah, yeah buddy. The, that soundtrack slaps <laughs> okay. like tentacles against a schoolgirl's thigh. No, 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 Pretty no. Much. The game. I would never play the game, but the, the soundtrack is quite, 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 quite unique. I found. Uh, yeah, I know. Being the if company it, that they are the bones, and wanting yeah. to make money out of the whole. Oh yeah, let's let people download the soundtracks if they want to buy it without buying the actual game. That way, we can still get sales from people who don't care about that particular game. Go figure. Uh, but and here I was just happy that I could buy the soundtracks. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, apparently a lot of them are on sale too. And there, there are some, there are some good ones on here. Like transistor was up at the top of the list. That has a really good soundtrack. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Then you pointed out hollow Knight's on there too. So well, like, yeah, my favorite yeah, soundtrack I of, uh, even though I played it late of 2019 was um, near automatica. Thematic. So here, 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 here's a question though, uh, for for the two of you, and I guess for the rest of the audience as well. Do you, like, do you actually go and listen to game soundtracks outside of the game? No. Uh, basically everything by Jeremy Soul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, because I, I don't I don't know because I, I have a bunch of soundtracks through Steam, right? But there are very few games where I, I, I get a sudden craving to listen to the soundtrack of just because like, man, remember that boss fight that had a wicked soundtrack. I want to listen to that right now. Or, Well, I mean, then, then there's some games where you inadvertently own most of the soundtrack, like uh, yes. Victor Vren. <laughs> well, yeah, and, yeah um, that, 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 that one Victor Vren Motorhead, Motorhead expansion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, I got all this. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, if you have the Talos Principle on Steam, which most of you probably do um the some of the songs show up uh if you use the steam music player they show up twice and i bring that up because when i took a screenshot uh, showing the steam box running like the steam music player just to show oh look the intensity pro is actually capturing audio now i didn't do anything it just started working mm -hmm. uh so <laughs> and strider uh in discord was like People use the Steam Music Player, so 
Yeah, fair, apparently that's fair not assumption a thing. because I accidentally <laughs> triggered it and I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> right? Like the, the only time I ever used the Steam music player is when I accidentally smashed the hotkey that it <laughs> that's uh, that is pretty much to. what happened, man. True story. Yeah. Oh, it was Mir, not Strider. Okay, okay. my bad, Mir. <laughs> so good Mir's news, everyone. The on that one. Metro Mir, Exodus. Mir is we gotta talk about this because this is a thing that's gonna happen, and when it gets done being all epic, uh maybe they'll scooch over to Linux because hey man, Deep Silver, we have two metro games from them why are we talking about this because if we eight hours ago deep silver known as the developer on the forums it seems said uh, well hang on let's get this in order the god emperor doge wrote linux version question mark 2033 redux and last light got a linux release any news on this one deep silver writes back we are working on it more news soon yeah so i mean mm. I, I, I don't I don't know, man. G- give, given given that the last Deep Silver games we got under Linux were using virtual programming in the form of Saints Row, yeah. I would be I would genuinely be ecstatic if they pumped out a native port. And they're like, hey, yeah, we we did we did it for um, Last Light, we did for the OG Metro, we did for the Enhanced Edition. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess the it was Reduxes, the edition. yeah, or yeah, the Redux. The Redux. Um, but I'm in the in my in my little shriveled up heart. I genuinely think it's going to be like, hey, we tested this on Proton. We won't back ban you for, you know, playing it. Hmm. <laughs> uh, this, th- dude, um, that would just make me all the happy because I just assumed like, well, I guess I'm never going to play that one. Um, I really like the Metro games. I, I was like, Jesus, uh, that that's how you do storytelling in a first person shooter. Then. I think along with the rest of the internet, ex- ex- except for you, Gary, when it went to the Epic Store exclusive, it was like, you know what? Fuck you, Deep Silver. Um, yeah. 20, yeah. 2020 is going to be interesting for that because now well, the exclusivity terms of a lot of uh, interesting games that were on exclusive for Epic Store is up. So we're going to start seeing mm-hmm. them on Steam. Do you? Okay, let's just let's start really pissing people off. What's the under and over of Epic coming back with the dump truck number two of like let's renew that exclusiveness i wouldn't put it past them i wouldn't put it past them you see that's yeah no (laughs) however i think after a year of uh i'm guessing not terribly great sales in the epic store maybe those developers are looking we actually want more people to play our game so steam's uh, the bad no steam's the wrong place for them brad (laughs) unfortunately I, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you'll get that sort of pressure cooker, uh, the the pressure release thing, where people have been holding off specifically because they're Epic Store exclusives, and once they actually get up, get out on Steam, people will be more inclined to. Buy I legitimately them. would say, I mean, just being perfectly honest, I don't know if if it wasn't an Epic exclusive, and now we have Proton, you know, rolling out with version five point not where it is now. If that had been available on Steam, I'd probably already own it. Mm. Being on yeah. Epic, I'm like, nope. And this extra good news, I'm like, wait a minute. So if you're going to give me, even even if it is Proton and it's officially supported, okay. I mean, yeah, it, it worked perfectly fine for Nier and Doom and all these yeah. other games, right? So, And it's not even an Epic exclusive because, well, I don't know if it's uh, Metro Exodus specifically, but there are a bunch of games that were supposedly uh, Epic exclusive that showed up on the Windows Store. That's because that doesn't count. <laughs> That's because Tim Sweeney loves Microsoft. He but also yes. <laughs> he has. He he hates Android. He hates Microsoft, but he loves them too because oh, they're, they're things that make money. Oh, it's uh, and it's on Stadia too. So there's that. <laughs> oh, Something yeah, mil- I thought of genuinely would never happen in our lifetime. We're running out of um, games that have been in perpetual yeah. early access. What have we been talking about? Version one point oh. What are we talking about? Besiege. In full release, 18th of February, uh, the update will bring the last Campagon, an island, a category of block automations, logic blocks, and yay. Also, the price is going to go up. Multiplayer is in there. There's definitely a level editor. It's currently $9.99, even when it does handstands. But, uh, yeah, they, they've made a point. They're like, along with like how early access, it doesn't matter if it's been in there for five years, the prices will be going up. And I think it's just come an amazingly long way from the origins of wacky death machine creation kit to now it's like Minecraft levels of 
complexity and <laughs> yeah i I, th I think that's kind of one of the strengths of the early access model is like you do to get that level of feedback and your game can transform into something beyond what the original vision was it's it, i guess it's kind of like a positive scope creep i don't know it can it can go either way but like siege i, I, I loved you <laughs> but like you're three years too late for that 1.0 man dude man this it's game been a while <laughs> yeah it it it's been so long I mean, not to poo poo on it. I mean, we're still. Oh, it's, be. it's it's a great game. It's fun as shit. But it's absolutely fun. I, what I like was the original simplicity of it, and watching people make things using such like limitations, and still building Gypsy Danger. You know, and I'm like, ooh, neat. But now a lot of that's been built in, so we're just going to see some radical. But it did miss. It's like it hit on the internet all those years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. Reddit, Reddit was like, "This is the best thing," ever. and that only lasts at most what two weeks. And yeah, and ago. and and then people people move on. And no. I and I think like those people had their fun with the siege back like three years ago. But I yeah. mean, it it has it has come a long way because the multiplayer is pretty slick. Um, mm -hmm. They've added they've added like the the fact that they're adding logic blocks and whatnot basically means like they they've Minecraft like the Minecraft analogy is super apt yep. in the sense that <laughs> once upon a time it's like hey we can build these sort of sixteen bit computers in Minecraft they're like yeah now it's just a block because we expect people are expecting this functionality now right so. uh, I I look forward to seeing because I I kept it on the hard drive. Uh, forever until i'm like you know what just whenever now they're like knock 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 hey vin install it again so yeah it's gonna be fun to play around with it huh? yeah we might, we, might, we might do some of that on thursday multiplayer we could do yeah. it on friday you come join me for a stream for once mm. ah see they're allergic to it. i try to show up for their streams and be like hey guys i'm in the chat Poof, smoke bombs i, I show up for <laughs> jackbox <laughs> yes you at least do that at least <laughs> All right, pa Pedro, mandatory disclosure time. Nepotism is well, alive and well here at LGC. There is uh, such a thing about disclosure, and technically, this game was developed by Nori's cousin's husband. So, father's, father's four roommates, brothers, nephews, cousins, cousins former roommates, hairdresser. Yeah. But, but it's Pedro, like two or Pedro, three degrees of separation at this point. Absolutely nothing, which is oh, what you'll nothing. become. I see your shorts. <laughs> All right, go ahead. But yeah, no, it's a puzzle frame. It's a uh, sliding puzzle, a sliding block puzzle thing where you have to basically reconstruct the uh, the picture that you're presented with. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, very much developed by a Portuguese team. And I, yeah, one of the developers I know because I went to his wedding to Nori's cousin. So yeah, there's that. But yeah, it's the, it's pretty cheap it's uh one pound 69 here uh regular price but uh, the current uh, launch sale is uh 10 off so you can get it for pretty cheap uh and yeah it's um it's a sliding what, block puzzle game what would, 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 would you say it sucks or it doesn't blow Ooh. <laughs> neither <laughs> does it go from suck to blow possibly <laughs> It's an achievement. It's a perfectly acceptable game. <laughs> See, you really should have like we, we should have worked some advertisements in there, put our faces just, like <laughs> randomly. Yeah, yeah, it just screws everything up. Crashes. I, I, I just think it needs more Mega Made. It does require a sixty-four bit processor, uh, one point five, uh, yeah, two gigs of RAM, and uh, one point five gigs of hard drive space. So that's yep. the thing. It's pretty mm -hmm. cheap. It's priced to sell. Indeed. All right. So, coming up next, there's a brand new Mesa out, and seems Yay. like it's busted as fuck. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> also, also, maybe some non-NVIDIA ray tracing. It might be possible in the future. Also, the far yeah. distant future. Question mark? Question mark. Well, uh, with the horse out of the way, and it, it's impressive that it still manages to retain some sort of form that we can get out of the way. We can now get to the shilling. This no, is that's a the trap. Point. It's a mimic. I thought, I thought I thought it was a pound. Dude, listen, I'm just saying. Rule of thumb: if the horse fits into a chest, mimic, not horse. What if it's like a mimic a containing point. a horse containing a mimic? It, it, if you open a chest and it contains a horse, it is not like bloody. <laughs> oh, mimic. is it a mimic disguised as a dead horse inside another mimic? Yep. 
Inside inside an actual dead horse. You try to like Luke Skywalker <laughs> it on the hoth. It's like I thought they spelled bad on the outside, and then it just opens up and eats you. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. serious. Man, for real, dude. You get a Nicolas Cage poster and you think you know mimic physics. You don't. You I don't. just want to see like look look at look at those beautiful lips. I want to see Pedro kiss them. Kiss Nicolas Cage. No. Damn it. You coward. You fucking cowards. If you don't stand for this cowardice, you should head on over to LinuxGameCast.com. Move your mouse over that support tab yeah, baby. and donate some money Whoops. with the express colliery that Pedro must kiss Nicolas Cage. Mm-hmm. Or else that check does not clear. Uh, we, you, you can do it with Bitcoin. Wait, wait, you can pay, do it. No. Are you trying to tell me this is a pay to cage operation? <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> if, Listen, we don't get paid unless Pedro smooches Nicolas Cage. That is the promise that we make to you week after week after week. We don't spend your Bitcoin. We don't. We don't spend your T-shirt proceeds if you don't. If you don't do that, yeah. But buy, 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 buy yourself some Linux Game Cast yeah, shirts baby. and Steel's then take a picture up. of. Yeah. So if you want, if you want to, if you want to go rep the LGC crew in California, you can. I gotta get a Lonely Penguin shirt for that. I'm gonna mm-hmm. get the women's Lonely Penguin shirt and then like I don't know. Uh, like in all that seriousness, remind me of that like tomorrow afternoon and I'll send you one. Nice. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, uh, we, we get, we got a store, we got all sorts of stickers and hoodies just, and uh, mouse pads you can buy. Store's awesome. Uh, what, what would be the size that would be just awkwardly tight? Just, just out of curiosity. Not that I. 2X. 2X? All right. 2X. Thank you. <laughs> um. As you were. As a, yeah. If you, if you. <laughs> I mean, if, if you want to pay to see my nipples, you can head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Yeah, uh, becoming a Patreon is pretty awesome. You get access to our Discord. Uh, you get an extra hour of Linux Gamecast goodness a week with the pre-pre super shows. And you get a fancy schmancy RSS feed for that. You even get a video version sometimes. Uh, you can get access to the show notes. That's pretty cool because you can suggest stories to us. We, have a, we actually have a new channel in our Discord specifically mm-hmm. for suggesting stories. And with show note access comes the ability to comment on stuff. So if we get stuff wrong or you just want to troll us or talk shit, you can do that in our show notes and we might even bring that into the show proper. <laughs> you don't even have to um, wait for Pedro to post the video and just start shit talking like You absolutely Tuesday. can. That, 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 that's the real pay to win the Linux Gamecast. It is, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Discord is awesome. If you, you like, you know what's going on here at Twitch, man, we generally hang out there and it's not like. We have IRC too, so and that's all tied in with bots and all that. So you can chat with us in IRC. We'll be there. We'll come hang out. Uh, pre pre super shows. And that is awesome. Uh, I will be putting out early videos for patrons uh, for some of the audio testing, interface testing that I'm going to be doing, just kind of for a review and be like, hey, what do you think of this? Because this is a whole new thing I'm doing, and I want some feedback. And before we roll out a finished product, uh, if you are curious. But all this audio stuff, video stuff that we do, we have a little thing on Amazon, which is a list of every single thing we have. So if you're curious about the networking gear, the monitors, the PCs, the video stuff, audio stuff, the lighting, the storage, and the stuff that will zap you into tomorrow. Like a vaporizer plugged in. Yep. All your vaping. (laughs) And if you want to be on this crazy wall, Frank's find up standing cannibals uh, like Carl, Mike G, Basil. And Arthurin, um, Arthur, have- Arthurin gets a special shout out this week too because he, he bought uh, yes he, he he bought that <laughs> lovely Nicholas Cage poster that Pedro refuses to kiss. Hey man, as well as an NVMe raid card. <laughs> those those lips, those he lips. Did. <laughs> lips are yeah. hips. Yeah, yes. no, uh, Arthurin uh, forked over for an Asus by sixteen. It's got uh, it supports. For NVMe drives, uh, you just have to pull out the screws and uh, slot in the NVMe's, which I currently don't have four of, so that's okay. going to have All to right. wait a little bit. Real question, then. Um, can you get an NVMe to SATA connector? Probably? Maybe? Okay, if you can M- get M.2 NVMe- to SATA, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, M.2 mm-hmm. to SATA, then we get SATA, because I know they make SATA to ID SATA to ATA, then we get ATA to ID. What we're getting down to is a 5400 RPM drive connected. To that. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was kind of hoping we could see if we can raid Pedro's like Vapotron. <laughs> I'm just telling you, but a uh, YouTube video yeah. that I would watch is that adapted to a 5400 RPM drive. <laughs> 
Well, and then El Chipo is right up there, so that m may work. But he did send uh, a bit of a note. Actually, his note was so big that I got two bits, and the second one has nothing on it. So, yeah. Uh, hey, Pedro, would you be so kind and test this uh, card thingamajig before I buy one for myself? Thanks much. With love, uh, parentheses, no homo, Arthurin. So you gotta, you gotta have all the, all the homo. All the homo. <laughs> the homo the better, baby. <laughs> Arthurin, you are also, you are also a coward. I, also, also, I, I, lo I love the logic of I'm going to buy this for you so you can test it so that I can buy another one for myself. Right. <laughs> Lead I will absolutely, Man. as soon as I get one more NVMe drive, I can, um, yeah, just try and raid off of that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Are, are you proud of yourself not kissing Nicolas Cage? Do it. Do it, you coward. Poster. Do it. No one cares. Do it. All right. There's a brand new version of Mace out. They um, sent out a little uh, mailing list item uh, that 19.3.4 uh, is out. It has some interesting stuff. Lots of ACO fixes uh, get listed. Uh, there's some other um, there's some other Vulcan stuff in there as well. But 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 apparently on 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 the Reddits. Someone, someone is speaking up, saying, "I uh, do not update." Um, Daniel Suarez, three sixty nine. Nice. I uh, was testing this uh, on uh, Manjaro, and it was causing it was causing some crashes. Um, it was a little unstable, so he figured he'd report that. Um, and I yeah, mean, isn't like you're running Manjaro Archbase? You you're already playing RNG with whether or not shit's gonna work, right? <laughs> True. They don't track uh, as close to the bleeding edge as Arch itself does, but yeah, no, they caught it because it's like, oh yeah, no, we were testing, and apparently there's a bunch of um, like errors uh, that it was X and it was games not working properly, and it was there's a, actually a bunch of uh, links if you follow the. Uh, Appar just apparently, click on the link. yeah. <laughs> apparently, as of four hours ago, they have pushed out a fix. Nice. So cool. Uh, All right. <laughs> so your but, weekend I mean, has been saved. Yes, AMD users. I mean, like, yeah. Honestly, like the every time you see ACO stuff mm -hmm. in the Mesa updates, you're like, yes, your Radeon card just got that much more faster. <laughs> right. Yep. One hundred percent. And yeah, this is uh nineteen three four, and it's um, basically the catch up for people who are still using the nineteen series, which is most distros because you can totally just clone the Git and build Mesa twenty right now, but. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think you, you, it's, you it's, it's not it's not on like GA this. though. I think I think it's still in like a release candidate or beta phase. So yeah. you know <laughs> your mileage may vary. But that's the whole point of semantic versioning, right? Is you version the things that are stable and everything. Here's else. a Pretty question: much. Do you think it would be able to play Vulcan? Maybe it may. And if uh, if, if, if you soon, dream hard enough, well soon ish we may even see uh some uh, godot games come out with some vulcan because they did a bit of a heads up post vulcan has been merged into the master branch so test at your own peril uh it's basically the uh, takeaway from this they merged it now uh before it's finished so that they can start working on the remainder of features 4.0 which is very good and according to um who was it that made the post? Remy Ver Verscheld? I don't know. Uh, he said that um, the current work uh, is just a part of what they need for 4.0, and if they can get this in, they can get everything else. Uh, in the meantime, if you are trying to use Godot to actually build a game and put it up for sale, you know, uh, you may want, yeah, stick to the old version. Mm -hmm. Right now, don't try to use the big 4.0 up and coming because it's unstable. It's very unstable. I think it's yeah, pretty cool, man. I mean, it's definitely still a work in progress, so it is absolutely not ready for production, but it's there to uh, be kicked in the teeth. And man, we've come a long way from good old, even talking about it on this show from, hey, man, Vulcan's getting merged into Vulcan. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean it, it it's true. Again, yeah. Molten VK Molten VK was kind of the big tipping point for Godot supporting Vulcan. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's good that they're releasing that, right? Cause at least it's not finalized, but if you get it into the hands of developers, they can at least start poking at it and saying mm-hmm. like, Hey, this is broken or Hey, maybe you need to look at this. Do, getting do getting that, getting that early feedback is crucial. To, like accepting their fate, you know, like this vulgar thing's happening. You probably time to like deal with it. Well, I maybe think at this point, it's just the... <sighs> Well, the, the people the, in the, the AAA story. industry, because yeah, you mean like Bethesda doing the, the DX twelve? Yeah. Well, see, apparently that's 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 where the hot ray tracing stuff is for now. Dun dun dun. Mm. So, um, the next story is from uh, PCGamer.com. dot com. Uh, so Chronos put up a little uh, GDC itinerary item. They're talking about the future of ray tracing and Vulcan. And the uh, spinning the wheel of booga booga. There are deep. seven rays and one Gary in this photo. Oh no, not Gary! I hate Gary. Uh, yeah, but uh, they're going to be giving a talk about uh, standardized uh, ray tracing implemented via Vulcan, something that is not tied to the RTX on the mm-hmm. Tensor cores. Mm-hmm. So uh, that that will be happening soon. Um, right now, it really seems that the most development for ray tracing stuff is being done. Um, in uh direct x12 with the dx ray or whatever the hell they're calling it right uh there 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 is support in vulcan uh but it's an nvidia proprietary extension at the moment because amd doesn't have any sort of hardware ray tracing enabled on their cards yet but that's going to change soon hopefully maybe i don't know this ray tracing crate is, is um i don't think it's as hot as nvidia was hoping it's it would not be. a phase mom no, and uh, unlike what Jensen was trying to get everyone to believe, it doesn't actually just work. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah no, it's uh, it's good, you know, to have something that's not tied to NVIDIA hardware, like G-Sync for a while. Well, I, I mean, I mean, that standardization is important, lest it becomes, at least under Linux, like SLI, where it's technically supported, no one's fucking using it, but yeah. it's supported. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing, man. Uh, we're going to see more general purpose uh, ray tracing, especially with whatever big Navi is going to roll out. It's, it's going to have something in it. Either that or AMD's just been bullshit with the PS5 and the new Xbox 9000 or whatever it's going to be called. So When you say big Navi, I think of like the fairy from Legend of Zelda, except like huge dude, and rolling. Uh, <laughs> huge. Navi feeding, man. Hey, it's a thing. Listen. Uh, <laughs> cool. Humble Bundle has gotten regional. Finally. Yes. Yes, they do. And um, now, if you go, well, not now, now, but uh, future bundles, if you go and try to buy one, instead of being presented with the price in dollars, you will actually be able to play, uh, to pay in uh, euros, British pounds, Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, New Zealand dollars, Turkish liras, uh, Russian rubles, and uh, Philippine pesos. So... That's I'm, I'm, good, I'm and very happy they do say that that that, that uh, humble is now supporting monopoly money out of Canada. Dude, yes, it's <laughs> awesome. Are, are they and they at? do say it's like the prices are not being set as like one dollar means one euro means one pound. Uh, the prices are calculated when each bundle starts, um, as close to the conversion rate as they can get it. So that's that's great. It, practical terms it'll stay much the same of what it is right now it's just that with an accurate you, you, readout of the price yeah time at the launch you, you, yeah. <laughs> uh, you can't like, manually select any of the currencies but are we going to get the dollar dues yes the yeah. dollar dues and the kiwi dollars Th- those aren't real though quit talking quit making stuff up this is a factual news show there's no such thing <laughs> as kiwi <dollars. laughs> they're, they're called they're called kiwi bucks and they're yeah. gorgeous this man spread much. the reality man maps without new zealand it's a real thing um, yeah. new zealand's I mean, a myth statistically finland is a rounding error oh it's new so zealand finland not australia exist. okay uh, uh, brilliant brilliant good news um oh we got more proton yeah, um, yes. hot off the heels <laughs> the of egg roll one. <laughs> hot off the heels of uh, Proton 5.0 and GE 5.0. There's GE 5.1, and it's basically in my story imagination. Based. You said hot off the eels. 
they're hot and sexy eels waiting for, they're in your and neighborhood they're on and my they're waiting for you to both erotic and delicious get out, get out of my brain you monster <laughs> never <laughs> never um yeah but uh so this is basically a rebase of the latest proton patches on proton uh or rather this is the uh, staging patches on uh, top of the latest proton so it's a bit of a rebase uh they have switched input handling back to the proton method rather than the wine staging method um apparently they're still soliciting feedback there's still some discussion within the project as w- as to which one is actually better it seems like proton is better for now but that may change as well yep. uh they 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 have uh, updated dxvk updated f audio vk 3d like yeah it's it's basically just all the stuff that came with proton uh, 5.0 but First now with glorious can we all agree that it's getting a little ridiculous uh because they do note that vkd 3d is new now this is awesome though and still but it still doesn't work with all the direct x12 games yet i love that it's that far along you're running out of vks and d's and threes i mean dx we're running out of direct x at this point (laughs) (laughs) no like i i i I would like to imagine that at the end of this we're just gonna have projects called like uh, just give Microsoft a chance for a DirectX 13. Uh, but uh, one of the known issues, uh, well, besides the VK D3D uh, one, is um, trying to play Just Cause 3 using um, Glorious Egg Roll 5.1. Mm-hmm. You can't save. Mm. You just can't. Well, you know, I was reading this, and there's still no fix for the goddamn Batman. Which <laughs> no <laughs> further leads. This is just factual proof that uh, Valve employees a watch the show, b don't like me. Um, <laughs> Seems about right. No, I mean it tracks. So yay! I, I, I believe it. Egg roll, fix it. Uh, free Orion, man. Let's talk about some open sourcey stuff. Yeah, it's been it's been a while since we talked about some open source games. Actually, Free Orion was one of the first Linux games I ever tried when I installed Zubuntu those many years ago on my old computer. Uh, but yeah, I kind of bounced off it because grand strategy isn't my thing. Uh, but they do have some handy dandy updates, like um, for especially for long term games, they have asynchronous turn support, so people can like come in and do their turns later, but other people can still continue to play the game. Um, when you have uh, ingra- in-game organizations, you can set up like guilds and factions and whatnot. You now have username and passwords, so people will have to enter the special password of specialness in order to join the I don't know, LGC Free Orion organization. There's lots of combat enf- enhancements as well involving re- weapon types and the ships that they're effective against, and... Yeah, I mean, it, it's chugging along. If you were a big fan of Master of Orion, that sort of grand galactic strategy, Free Orion does it very, very similarly. And I got to throw great. a little bit of um, unsolicited advice. Screenshots projects, please, yes. for the love of flying spaghetti monster. I mean, I, that's there what I've been doing. The, in, the introduction bit does say screenshots, so. <laughs> they should be on the main page, though. Yeah. <laughs> they should be. I'm yeah. genuinely on the main page. It's like, nope. It's introduction. No, don't don't make people click. Pedro, people don't Pedro. want to click things. We, we know where it's located. I'm just saying the example. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, no. At least it, one. It's in the about section. Then you go to inter- then there's a drop down menu on that one, and, <laughs> and then you have to go to LinuxGameCast.com and click on the support button and yep. like fight a spam golem. It's and, awesome. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Screenshot. So dot LinuxGameCast.com. Uh, but uh, besides. Uh, your grand strategy games you may remember at one point uh we had uh ike doherty formerly of the soulless project uh on linux weekly daily wednesdays well he's back uh, he is uh he's decided to start a bit of a game development studio thing is and, he gonna uh, include called- screenshots because if he doesn't include screenshots i'm gonna be terribly cross there are him. screenshots just okay. not on the main page so, uh, I'll buy it. <laughs> All that much like uh, <laughs> yeah, much like Free Orion, they're not on the main page, but yeah, it's called Lispy Snake, and uh, they they ha- haven't put out a game yet, mm-hmm. but there are a couple of them in development, and if you would like to help Ike um, develop it, they have a, the Game Razor crowdfunding campaign. I'm definitely going looking on. on the about page and says Linux first. We run Linux daily here. All right, that's cool, but that's only half the store. Y'all running at night. Hmm? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, so, so 
here, 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 here's here's the funny thing though. So they, they they have all their stuff posted on GitHub. They're they're working on a game engine called Serpent, uh, mm-hmm. which only provides build instructions for Solus, which okay. is fantastic. Lovely. Um, yeah, <laughs> uh, and they're also working on sort of like a Mandalorian esque bounty hunting uh, FTL style game, which I'm actually kind of interested in. It. It's called The Last Peacekeeper. It does give me some pretty big FTL vibes. They do have some screenshots for it on the Lispy Snake website. Um, so I'm. <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm saying, dude, some bucks for the Kickstarter. Uh, 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 I read that as what is a fudge serpent? And I was like, nope. <laughs> it's the most delicious kind of serpent. <laughs> danger, yes, danger, Will Robinson. But yeah, if you have about twenty dollars that you'd like to donate to the Game Razor, uh, they say that they're doing a total of five hundred licenses, of which four hundred and five are still available. And for those 20 bucks, you get all of the 2D games that they release, Mm -hmm. which uh, the way that it was phrased leads me to believe that uh, they will make a 3D game at some point, maybe. Oh, no, baby. You got to string it out and be like, oh, we didn't say anything about 2.5. Yeah. Yeah. No, Uh, but we we, we, listen, that's some old shit. You got to get on those one dimensional (laughs) games. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, baby. It's just a dot. Rich room. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, this is, you know, if you are going to buy into that, it is crowdfunding. You're buying into a promise, not an actual product. So, you know, caveat emptor and whatnot. Yay. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right. Well, coming up next, we're going down, down, down. To a well down. of D's. Into the sun, if that intro cinematic is to be believed. Wait a minute. We're throwing chairs wait, at wait, wait sent three. There's a sun and the sun went higher. Yeah. Purple stuff. Hey, yo, it's your boy, Weed Beeper, here to throw some chairs at Descent 3. Checking it on, I don't know, three Linux distributions, Fedora, Neon, Debian. It's all good. Um, yeah, so we're taking a look at uh, Descent 3 uh, from Outrage Entertainment, ported by Icky Butt C. Gordon, Ryan himself. It's done on the Fusion Ha engine. Ah. You can pick it up for about 10 bucks. Um, what is it? The Vertigo continues, right? <laughs> As the highly anticipated sequel to Descent I and II takes the mind-bending, pulse-pounding experience to a whole another level. Uh, we picked it up because we want to support Ryan C. Gordon because he does some good work. You should mm-hmm. also check out his Patreon. That's not we're, we're not being paid to endorse this. He just does good work and you Yet. should support him. Yep. <laughs> uh, so let's get this going, Ven. How did it run on Debuin? Our descent into Linux. As I'm buying time to find my camera. Hey, Where okay. am I? There Is it going to be Pedro in a little circle again? <laughs> Dude. Over uh, under. <laughs> so the first thing I noticed with this was like, hey, I want to maybe stream it. And you got to use the dash W feature from um, Steam command line. That needs to be fixed. Uh, that's how you put, put it in the window. But. Over here, I managed to eke by on the 1920X Threadripper, um, 32 gigs of RAM, Debian 10.3, whatever it is this week. You know, Debian's always changing things up. No issues, really. I mean, there's a little bit of audio crackle, like right when it launches and it plays that pixelated smear from, because you couldn't find the source. This has been upscaled from like a postage stamp. P. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's rough, man. This is this something that didn't look that great at 640 by 480 back in the day. A little bit of crackle, but um, everything else, A-OK. Uh, the resolution's bit on the limited side. It's like, would you like 640 by 480, 800 by 600, 3840 by 2160? I was like, that's a bit of a leap. But you know what? Let's go with the UHD. Um, Tiny the, text mode. Yeah. It was hot, baby. Hot. Uh, Mouse, keyboard, controller setup is straight up 1990 on hard mode, man. Uh, I tried it with the Steam, PS4, X clone. They all kind of sort it while they moved. The menu stuff kind of moved around. Uh, But I would never, uh, like, be able to pilot anything in this game using a standard controller. Maybe, like, four of them and you used your toes as well. You might be able to pull it off because this was built for something with 11 buttons, foot pedals, and the yoke. Serious, serious, serious stuff. You can, however, play with the keyboard. Keyboard and gerbil, serviceable. Air quotes around that. Because, um, man, the, out of the box, let's just say if we were talking about this uh, during the break, I kind of wish it was bound, like the default layout 
is straight out of the 90s. Like, it is physically yeah. impossible to play this game. This would, be, this would make for a fun stream, Pedro, is playing this <laughs> with the default layout in the keyboard. Because as soon as I say A, forward, Z, back, you're like, oh, I remember those days. Yeah, you do. Um, <laughs> it's rough. It's rough. Uh, but performance-wise, you would expect it holds 60 at 2160p on my 2060. So... Let's get into a little bit of fun that I like it. You know, I picked up Descent 3 in like 2000 from Loki because why not, right? We didn't have a lot of options and everything Loki put out was a new game I got to play because I had kernel 2.2. I had 64 megs of RAM and a swanky hot 3D effects card. I was probably on a 3500 or 4000. Might have still had my original pass-through card, but I doubt it. After getting the CD mounted and installed, I sat back and enjoyed flailing into walls, hopelessly firing at enemies until exploded. Now, if we smash cut to like 2020, this is more of that. That, that was my entire experience with this trip down Nope Lane. Um, I tried using some of the advanced controller tech laying on the desk, as I talked about, but I could never come up with something that was more serviceable than a trackball and the keyboard. Which I was just a dog shit trying to do that the entire time. Uh, got about an hour out of me originally, like 20 years ago. And I was like, I'm making a Linux donation. And I sat down uh, this week and I kind of felt like I just made another Linux donation. Because, uh, you know, originally when this came out, it was like, it's OMG, 3D, everything. Look, it's totally 3D. We you know when it sent one, Descent 2, Descent 3. It was kind of a gimmick back in the day. And they, they sure as hell did didn't have the mechanics nailed down back then. This, this is a very stark, while very performant reminder of that technology. Um, I bought this for the same reason I picked it up the first time, man. You know, I want to support Ryan, and all it did was remind me is I really didn't like this game. Now, this is definitely one of the things Ryan likes to show off. He's like, hey, man, we set up like this motion control thing with all the flight. I wouldn't mind having a go in something like that. I could dig it. This is like playing a flight sim with an Atari Joe's joystick. So no joy was had. Uh, technically, good enough. It's completely serviceable. It's good to have this with SDL2 running on a modem system. You don't really have to monkey around with anything. But as far as fun, mm, no. But buy it anyway. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, with the with the motion control thing you brought up, there seems to be a good reason why Descent Underground was like, yeah, we got VR support because I think this would actually like function pretty well as a VR title if it was done uh, natively there. But anyways, yeah, there's a there's a good 10, 15 minutes of uh, figuring out the controls here on uh, Fedora 30, 64 bit with the i7, 6700K. That's a conservative estimate. <laughs> yeah, dude, like when you open that menu for the first time, you're like, oh, this is just layer one. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And it, it, it's a matter of like, OK, this should theoretically work. And then you get in the game and you're like, no, that did not work as well as it did in no. my head. <laughs> um, also, also, like, so. If you if you want to if you want to get to the options menu and you're on XFC you're gonna have a bad time because you got to hit Alt F2 to get into the options menu which is the application menu shortcut in XFCE so I had to unbind that in order for that to work that was fun um, yeah uh, I, I, while trying to get the controls working I found out that the DualShock 4 is a bit too much advanced technology for uh, Descent 3 apparently it is from an era where controllers only had two shoulder buttons and D pads and no analog sticks. So you gotta do you gotta do a little bit of uh, lurking around. Some combination of keyboard and mouse controls can be approximated, and it runs okay. Pedro Pedro raises a really good point about like trying to do loop de loops. He'll get into that on his section. Mm -hmm. But like, yeah, it's a it's a fucking twenty one year old game, man. It it looks like one. Oh, the, the those cinematics, man. That's that's and that voice acting was rough. But that's what you had back in the day. That was what the budget allowed for. Hey, you got. Guy in the office, lunch dude, you have a good sounding voice. Get in the booth. Um, so yeah, fun wise, it's a. I mean, you really should be playing with a flight stick. That's what the controller tr default controller seems to be about. But it's a 60 OF shooter with like large, expansive labyrinthine levels. So pew pew, get lost, eventually trigger your goals, rinse, repeat. It's fun enough, I guess. Um, but you know, it's a 21 year old game. Descent Underground does it a lot better. You should check that out if you got it for free. Otherwise, yeah, it's yeah, you know, unfortunately, yeah. like Descent Underground isn't a thing anymore. That, uh, yeah, yeah, well, well, 
Womp womp. Yeah. So uh, over here uh, with the 3700X and the GTX 1080 on KDE Neon, it launches and it immediately, the first thing I noticed was it jacked up the gamma on both my monitors to 150%. It's like, really? Wait a minute. That's, really? Are you running KDE? <laughs> yes. All right. I just felt like <laughs> it's KDE Neon. Everyone. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We we don't have he's, that. He's, he's running no on KDE Neon. Dude, he that's could be one. running KDE on Windows 10. This is a possibility. <laughs> it's true. It's, you technically could, but you wouldn't want to. Uh, but yeah. Uh, first thing I do whenever I start a new game, because I'm one of those uh, stupid people, apparently, that uses the mouth, uh, the mouse on my left hand, and I use the arrow keys to move around in Wait, games. wait, wait, we gotta roll yeah, back with, with this fucking yeah. Vampire Hunter D hand of yours all of a sudden. No, he, he uses his mouth on his left hand. He likes no, to his suck his own thumb. Yeah, <laughs> But no, it's yeah. The, the first thing I do is I go to the options menu and I go to the controls and I rebind everything because yeah. And well, uh, I tried to do that. Well, I did do that, but I got a little bit scared the first time around because I hit the button that I wanted to set and the little area that shows the key you have it set to was blank. It's like, oh God, Freaking damn it. Really? It doesn't work? But then I started the pilot training thing. It's like, oh, it is actually registering what I'm uh, setting as the key for that control. So it's just the uh, visual uh, display that's not working properly. The mouse look. That too was interesting because it defaults to um, flight controls instead of the default mouse look. Which means that the vertical axis is inverted. So that uh, tied a really, really weird knot in my brain, and I had to figure out really quickly how to change that because I just couldn't handle that. But I found where it was, and I disabled it, so that's cool. Um, the graphics, well, look at it. It's 1999 and old Splendor. Uh, and the sounds, they are very 99, uh, 1999 and old their Splendor. But... The menu music, that that I enjoyed. I spent a long time just sitting on the menu, just listening to the music, so there's that. Uh, the fun, it is fun. I, I actually found myself having fun, but I also found myself very quickly hitting F4 to uh, get the uh, little... Specs. No, no, the bot, that little helper bot that you can uh, spot in to show me where the fuck I'm supposed to be going because the game has no signposting whatsoever. This is the late 90s after all. But when you do get there, uh, the only thing that was really letting me down were the mouse controls. There's some kind of resistance when, you, when you're trying to pitch up and down and when it finally gets going, it tends to overshoot what you're trying to aim so it's a bit of a game of cat and mouse as to whether you're aiming at the right thing or not and i couldn't really find an option to disable that particular behavior so i'm going to chalk it up to the game being two decades old mm -hmm. and you know when you account Back for fourth yeah 21 forth. years Back since this game forth. was released it's pretty good three chairs so one of the things I really want to hit on is Matthew. Matthew brought up a point. Strider, it's like in flight sims, the vertical axis is inverted always. It's one of the biggest issues of this game. It's not a flight sim. No, the, it's, it's an FPS that happens. To, it's a to shooter have with the controls degrees. of a flight yeah. sim. I mean, how many times is like you know I could. This is the same reason I, I don't have a helicopter. I can't fly a helicopter. There's other reasons why I don't have a helicopter. But I just, I want foot pedals. It's like I could probably if I could. Get like that extra why bullshit. Need the V twenty two Osprey setup. The Widowmaker? <laughs> nah, dude. I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Just give me a mouse. I can fly that thing with a trackball, bitch. Bring it mm -hmm. into the ocean. <laughs> it was thirsty. Mm -hmm. Just like a Portuguese drone. Oh yeah. All right. Coming up next. Straight toss a coin to your Witcher, or at least your Linux Gamecast, so we can tell you how to run Witcher. Jingle jingle. Without using Eon. And if you've been around for uh, two decades yourself, 
chances are you probably have an opinion you'd like to share with the internet. We're not the way to do it. But if you have uh, something to say regarding Linux, something to say about what we did, something to say about, uh, well, something that we said that you don't agree with, <laughs> Well, no. there's a hate mail section just for you. And you can go to LinuxGameCast.com and hit the contact button. Yep. Make sure you pick LGC Weekly from the little show box. And we will feature your message right here, right now. With a, a certain amount of caveats, they're all listed at the top of the page. If you don't read that, you done goofed. Fuck you, I'm right? from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Reading's hard. I don't want to do it. <laughs> I made it all the way. Yes, you go to a website and you don't read. How the hell did you land on the contact page? It's a skill, baby. (laughs) Roulette, baby. Roulette. Owned over three decades. (laughs) Okay, all right. (laughs) And uh, speaking of three decades, let's say you were born in uh, 1986, like myself and Mr. Hickory Dickory here. All right. Um, So... Are you able to use Vulkan with The Witcher 2? I'm on Linux Mint and recently installed the Linux version from GOG, but my only renderer options are OpenGL 2.1 or 3.2. Are you playing this on Windows through Steam Play or what? Uh, I saw the title and was hoping an explanation or tutorial or something, but I haven't heard one yet. Toss a coin to your strider. No. Don't do that. Really? Don't, don't, don't give him money. Uh, no, you shouldn't you should um, actually give him money. The, uh, the, 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 the version that Ven was playing was the Steam version? With yeah, Steam he's, he's doing it through yeah, on Proton. Linux? No, 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 no. No, no, he, he, no, no he's, he's using Steam Play. He's using Proton on Windows to run The Witcher. Mm-hmm. In a VM. Running Kali Linux. Yep. Through Discord. On Discord. Uh, yep. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, this is a new hotness. I, I, I did write back because this came from the YouTubes and like you know, just using the, because, you know, if you uh, keep track of this, I, I streamed a bit of The Witcher 2 when I found out that you could actually run it with Proton now. I was like, yay, I'll play it. 16 um, hours later. Um, <laughs> but it does run quite well with the Vulcan. Pretty much out of the box. There's one little thing. Go to Proton DB. There's one little config file you have to copy over it. Then it's going to run great. But it was also curious. How do I do this with GOG? How you do this with GOG is install Lutris. That's step one, right? Mm-hmm. Then I'm sure there's a launch, GOG launcher for the Witcher too, right? Yeah. I'll let you use yeah. Vulcan. Easy as that, man. Other, other, yeah, otherwise, you, you can just otherwise straight straight up set up DXVK in a regular wine profile by using wine tricks. It's pretty easy. I gotta admit, this is one thing that Valve just got so right was give me a play button. Yeah. No. <laughs> Does my lazy ass have to do anything? Like the days of me, I, I personally used to enjoy dicking around with wine, but we're talking early 2000s of like, yay, I made this kind of, the window opened for a minute before it crashed. Yeah. Now, now all the wine prefix management stuff, it's real annoying. Stuff like Lutris and the Steam Play is super useful for it. Or, I mean, if you just like the busted experience, you can use the Eon version that comes with GOG. Do you, oh, yeah, you can totally use the native Linux version. Native Linux mm-hmm. version. Dude, you're a native Linux version. I am. Your you know face is a native Linux version. It is. <laughs> so, so, can, you, can you give me a little more sultry in that? <laughs> it is. Hmm. Mm. All right, beautiful people. We got to get out of here. Um, thanks for showing up. I guess we need to cue the music. You can always find this nonsense around 8.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. Where we'll be right here doing this. It's terrifying. Also, I'm, Jono, I'm scared. I, Jono, I need the super tablature for this fucking song because I couldn't find it. Um, I might be having to play a lot of guitar soon. You can always find me at Vin Stone on Twitter or just at Vin at mass.lindesteamcast.com. That's where I hang out. That's where I do the sexy. Uh, if you would like to recompile my Where did you think I was going with that? Do you think I was going to throw it to Pedro? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I said, like I said if, you want, if, uh, if, if you want to recompile my face, because my face is Linux native, as was previously discussed, you want another operating system, you can follow me on Twitter at The Burning Fool or 
Go to Mastodon, Mastodon.LinuxGameCast.com. I'm at Frojo. I don't post there, but you can follow me if you want. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't ever want to see me doing the sexy, or find me doing the sexy, Kiss you it. can absolutely, um... <sighs> You can absolutely yes, not follow me on Twitter at unaccounted4 or on, I suppose I am on Mastodon at unaccounted4 as well, but uh, yeah, much like Jordan, I do not post there. I post there. Yeah. Oh, someone had to. I'm not going to dignify that with a fuck you. <laughs> which one's delightful, which one's wasteful, and which one's messy? You decide. Yes. Send us a We're like three dwarves, Ben. <laughs> three dwarves down. <laughs> Gotta thank all our lovely Patreons, our Patreons, and our Patreons, our executive producers. Yeah, our Did I stutter? <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Garth Aaron, Mr. Foxdog, Empty, The Atomic Ass, Mike G, Bob Rev, Taplo, Aldeus, Matt Geek, Scoot, and... Not <laughs> yes. Our uh, Frostclaw. And Frostclaw. Right. Yes. <laughs> and our regular producers like David S. Smash G, Michael, Igal, Jolly, Topical, Gaius, Baltar, Mathieu, Yabo, Stonyfish, Krezjici... Mr. Alert, Michael N, Brad S, Massimoni, Dan W, Nubbin, Luke W, Matt C, Michael Dean, 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 The Sildat, Igor, Scott, Ryan, Joe Angel, Evandro, Douglas, Rohit, Gonzo2000, Jupiter Broadcasting, Renault, Ooh, Mr. Mango, Sir, Eric, Rosmawada, Ryan, Nathan, The Admiral JT, and... <laughs> you monster. <laughs> Evil, all of you. <laughs> yeah, it gotta think our our, fu our fuck buddies too. Yeah, those guys on the wall behind Ven. Damn it! Thanks for giving us supplies. Oh, yeah. Yay! We make things. Yay. Thank you, Arthur. We do cool shit. Thank <laughs> our third, you. Our third is the hell out. Dead for everyone. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs>